Let's go. Queen's Park Rangers are second bottom for possession, cross success, and nobody allows more shots on target at their own goal than the Super Hoops do. Today in Sunderland, they would be inviting the team with the second best XG, who have fired off 78 shots at goal so far this season, compared to Queen's Park Rangers 38, to come and have a go at them. If QPR got forward today, it would be to engage a defence in Sunderland that has afforded one of the fewest clean chances to score than any other team in the division. Queen's Park Rangers, then, are a slow, passive side who should allow us lots of chances to score. So this match was only heading one way. Pressure on the Super Hoops goal. Rumour before the game of two hamstring withdrawals proved true as Mowbray's selection saw Sirkin replaced by Huggins at left-back and Bradley Dack replaced by debutant Mason Burstow, who apparently had hit the back of the onion bag over 50 times in training on Thursday. With Burstow in the number 9 role, Job dropped back to his favoured 10 role, and the game got underway. Other than that, everyone in the excellent killing of Southampton last game kept their place. From the start, we saw that Queen's Park Rangers were going to be passive and give us lots of the ball. For Huggins as well. And now possibly with a, a chance to to create an option. And look for a counter on their own part. The ball was frequently just recycled by us into another attack. I see Burst over there linking up, wasn't he, early on? Clark down the left-hand side. He knows that that's going to be a corner if it runs out. This resulted early on in Clark having a penalty appeal. Oh, Clark can now have a crack down the left-hand side. Takes on one, takes on oh, two, goes down oh. in the penalty area. Oh, tank. He's here. here we go. Let's have a look. And whilst it looks like he's just been squeezed out of the play... Nah, not sure off that. He does, in fact, have his arm pulled. But you just aren't going to get these marginal calls as the away team so early in the game. Queen's Park Rangers were aggressive with Armstrong up front and Colback in the centre of the park... Watch him say hello to Dan Neal here. Have it back, Dan Neal Ball. involved, and that will be a free kick. Yeah, I think the give and go gets caught as well. Yeah, Dan Neal. Dan Neal, yeah. yeah. He gets to his feet, rubbing his right thigh, but he's OK. These two aside, though, Rangers largely stood off us out of possession. Bar well, does well to keep the possession. Hume looking for help in front of him. Sweeps it across to the left-hand side. With one of their first attacking set pieces, we look shaky under the ball. Thing to do then, in these early stages. It came out to Paul on the edge of the box, who struck it into the bottom corner. Shot comes goal. in, and it's a goal into the bottom right-hand corner. Sunderland didn't deal, did they? No. With the um... QPR, one shot and a goal. Is this going to be just like Rotherham again? Huggins, that one there we don't compete well enough for, and it's it set back, bodies pressing him through the legs, no chance for Anthony Equa had been down early on with a dead leg, and at the restart he went off, but having Alex Pritchard on the bench is a great option. Obviously Alex Pritchard plays a little bit higher, and Job might just drop in. Job dropped Neil. deep alongside Neil to got it Pritchard, and we continued to press. Just look how high Hume is here. Into his left foot, just keeps possession, finds Neil. It's a good ball to Pritchard. Pritchard could Dead. shoot. He's got space. He does shoot, but just delayed it, and that gave the defender time to make the block. But maybe and QPR continued to rely on counter-attacking chances, as only 30 seconds later, Hume put in this excellent tackle at the other end of the pitch. QPR pass, but and the counter now, Queen's Park Rangers. Or down the left-hand side through Elias' chair, and well, I think it was a great tackle in the end. I thought for a moment... Pumps upfield to Armstrong, left him feeding on scraps. And the fouls started to come as Queen's Park Rangers struggled to get a foot on the ball. And then Jack Colback nearly amputated Job's right leg. In the speed of the action, it's hard to see. But fortunately, the ref was well-placed and had no hesitation in drawing out the red card. Who's gone down. Colback was a little bit late on him. And, oh, he's uh, off. Well, that is a red Straight card red. Yep. for the former Sunderland midfielder, Jack Colback. Suddenly, immediately surrounded the referee. They didn't like it. When QPR fans look back at this, they'll see just how horrible it is. Colback is late here and his foot is very high. And that could easily be a leg break for Jope. Amazingly, Colback's just signed a two-year contract kicking shins for the Super Hoops. But today, 
All we saw of Jack was the back of him. A couple of inches up there above. Oh, yeah, that's a nasty one. Could have been a leg breaker. After the red card, QPR became as supine as a birthing sloth in stirrups, and they dropped very deep into a 5-3-1 formation. And from here to half-time, they gave Sunderland 85% of the possession. Now, it was just about making chances. And they came quick. Pritch put Job through with a lovely dink to the back post. Chat again. Here we go. In. And here here's we go. There we go. And he scored. But it's oh, ruled offside. Joe Joe Bellingham. It's Joe Bellingham. We got his head to it. It was a lovely header as well. Yeah. A beautiful ball in. But offside to, to Queens Park Rangers. I think. Let's have a look back now. Yeah, just oh. a tiny. I don't think it is though. Whatever happened to the attacker getting the benefit of the doubt? It's close. That is very very close. Yeah. But it's certainly not We're aware of what their response. QPR are. would pump the ball. Sunderland would recover and move comfortably through the thirds. That one there. Look at this. The movement of Burstow and Job dropping to receive the ball enables Sunderland to move smoothly up the field. Job out wide to Barr. And Trey Hume, who began with the ball, has it again. Only now, we're just 30 yards from goal, with all of the options in front of us. from Clark he's beaten his man then our fullback sat incredibly high as the pressure became relentless from Sunderland there was so much space that even Luko 9 had time to play at being an overlapping centre back Compact in front of them saying you're not coming through as you're going to have to go out wide Pritch and Joe combined again Clark on the left hand side brings it back inside and Pritchard clips it into again. the box but Joe hit an air shot opened his body yeah. out, he knew what he was trying to do, but just missed his kick. He's Go getting on. into good positions. Yeah, Carbon Cobb, and just keeping an eye on Job. Lovely movement comes away. With QPR limited in opportunities, when they did get the ball through a lost one here, they met Trey Hume, the master of the slide tackle. Clark and Barr, just like against Southampton, worked very well to stretch the hoop's back line constantly making them shuffle from left to right. Barr put Job through with a great ball. Job was simply everywhere today, constantly breaking the last line to provide opportunities. He's not 18 until next week, it's amazing. Clark mesmerised their defence before shooting. Clark has been productive already this season in the Championship and he's going to shoot with his right foot in terms of creating chances. But we had to be careful not to become Southampton in pushing forwards. Armstrong does well. Just to give a bit of respite to his team. They do commit a chair broke, but it was poor. Boom goes to ground. And then again, we came. So we approach the final minute of Added time. Can Sunderland get on level terms before the break? Again, it's Barr into the penalty area. Just looking for some support. And after Barr, Clark's shot was deflected to hit the back of the net. Clark now, is he going to shoot with his right? He's opened the space up. He does oh, drive it And right on half time. We were level. Silence the Queen's Park Rangers fans. I think it was deflected. Yeah, I think he Steve struck Tuss, it, it with his right foot. It doesn't really matter how it went in. Seeing how deep QPR were playing, Mowbray decided to press the advantage right at the start of the second half and took off a fullback for Patrick Roberts. If we have to break a deep line defence down, and we have all the ball, then let's have more creative possibility on the pitch. And Roberts would put pace on the ball movement as well. I love Mowbray's constant optimism. He is always trying to attack. And it just seemed like a matter of time. At a corner, Job and Ballard both beat their markers to rise first, and they aren't far from scoring here. And well, oh, two players, yeah, Ballard, one Ballard, of them, yeah. went up for it. It was a great ball. Barr and Roberts combined, showing the difference Roberts can make to the ball, shifting it quickly to make a chance for Barr. Barr now down the right-hand side, Touch. and he can drill it across Ooh. the face of goal. Begovic does well. Yeah, does well there, Asmi, with his right foot, I think it is. Job's waiting behind him. See it back now, drills it low. 
Joe coming in behind Asmir Begovic. And moments later, Roberts found Pritch in space with a quick pass. And Pritch nearly put in Burstow. Running it through. Opportunity for Burstow, but... Pritch was behind so much today. It is staggering to think that the club were prepared to let him go. And it's a bloody blessing that other clubs were too short-sighted to take him. He has improved in skill in the last 18 months and he just makes things happen. Look at this move here. Part of what makes Jack Clark so dangerous is that he plays very quickly off what happens in front of him. Here, Pritch and Roberts know what they're doing. They make the runs into space behind and Clark simply watches. If the players don't follow the runs, he'll play them in. If, like here, they do follow the runs, he'll cut inside and he has all of that back corner of the goal that he loves to shoot at open up for him. Pritch did this repeatedly all afternoon for Clark, presenting him with options every time. I'm glad Alex is still here. Clark and Neil combine down the left. Take care of it. Space. Again down the left hand side for, for Sunderland. Great there we goal go. in. Oh. That was belly. Job went close again. The lad is just extraordinary. Pritchard was excellent minutes later again. And whilst Begovic saved from Pritch. Can he get that turn ball? This time Pritch. Oh, oh, Ballard was at the back stick to knock it in. Finally, that Ballard anytime score a bet pays off for me. PR has one appealed for offside. Dan Ballard, he didn't stop and wait. He did the job that he had to do. Pritchard's shot deflected into his path. He had the simplest of tasks just to tuck it into an empty net. And Sunderland now lead at Loftus Road. Yeah, he's up there, isn't he, for the corner? If you're thinking of Dan Ball, you think he's going to come in with the towering header, but he stays in there. Alex Pritchard does really well. Good touch there out of the sky. He says to Abdullah Ball, leave it for me. Lovely little give and go. Good save from Begovic, but there's Dan Ballard. How do you like your first goal? Losing now, Ainsworth had little choice but to roll the dice looking for a goal. As he brought on attacking subs, Mowbray decided to counter this with even more pace, bringing on Aushishe for Burstow. It was a year ago this week that we saw Sims go off at Reading and Mowbray began playing with no strikers for the first time. And here we are, a year later, for the last half an hour, voluntarily adopting that same 3-7-0 formation. Clark and Barr were asked to be wing-backs in defence, with Ashish and Roberts just inside them as attacking wingers. And the chances kept coming. Reminding the referee of. First though out there this afternoon, Ashish just onto the pitch, looks like he wants to get on the ball. Clark put in Job, who cleared the keeper but missed the goal. But Abdullah Bar was racing in at the far post and hit the bar. Wide, and then the, the outside of the post from Bar. The shot from Bellingham was well wide to the extent that actually it turned into a pass. Yes, I thought As QPR pushed, more space emerged behind them. Referee says no foul. QPR fans, as you would expect, not particularly happy about it, but it gives some of them a chance to, to break. We have a frightening array of talent at the club now. This throw-in, for example, all the players on the left-hand side of the pitch here are Pritch, Ashish, Clark and Roberts. That is terrifying. And they undid QPR with ease. All marked up, Jake Clark Salter passes on Ashish to Osman Kake here. And that's OK, because he's guarding against the throw, moving the ball to the centre near the edge of the box and possible runners there. But when the ball doesn't go there, Kake has to meet Pritchard. And Clark Salter should really resume following Ashish here, but he doesn't. It's smart running from Ashish, and Pritch sees this pass just way before anybody else. It's a great ball in from Ashish, and Abdullah is there to smash it home on the half volley and wrap up the game. He's oh, ball in the oh post. Abdullah Bar. Abdullah Bar finish. comes cruising in. Lovely ball in. The Sunderland fans go crazy behind the goal. Barr sticks three fingers in the air. It's three for Sunderland this afternoon. And, and surely it's game over. For yeah, you'd now. say so. And a good play again. Alex Pritchard involved. And Oshie's been lively since he came on. Digs a decent cross out with his left foot. I think Job as it makes a cross, run across the near post. And what a finish. It's not quite a half volley. It's on the up. It's on the rise, isn't it? And he gets over it really well, as you say. And no chance for Asmir Begovic. 3-1 Sunderland and you'd imagine that should be game over. QPR heads will drop now you would imagine. They only have 10 men. They're two goals down. 
Yeah, great finish that is. Job went off for Hamir at the restart, and we just needed calm heads to see out the game with the furious Queen's Park Rangers having nothing to lose now. Like about him as well, getting himself into the box, gambling time and time again. He's, he's playing up there a little bit more. And as the time drew up, more chances came. Yeah. Barr and Roberts combined excellently again. Yeah. Roberts, though, back to Barr. Barr the back heel. Roberts drilled oh. left footed. I don't know if he Is there something in this pairing? Or whether it just flashed wide. Off the boot of Roberts. Yeah, back, yeah. I thought we overplayed it a little bit there. Is it Abdullah Bar? A little back heel back into his path. Let's have a look now. Little reverse pass and a little chop back heel. Sits up for Patrick. Bang. No. Past the post. I think it's Kakai back there, isn't it? Got it covered. Nice interchange. Struck it pretty well, actually. Yeah, it did, yeah. Clark had a chance and QPR looked beaten now. Here's Clark. And Sunderland get another into the box again. Jack Clark outside of the boot cross. Oh. Nobody quite Pritch fashioned a goal for Hamir. But why he doesn't head here, I don't know. Hamir, oh man, he didn't go for goal himself instead. Oh. Is that a foul on Roberts? On oh, no, Oshish, I should say. I'm sure if he's offside, yes, yeah, you say Hamir. No matter, he got another chance minutes later. Outside him. Yes, he Hamir, this should oh. be number four. Good save, Begovic, to be fair. Hamir got his and if he heads that at the floor, it would be a goal. Every time he comes on, Hamir gets chances with his head or with a decent shot and his running. The goals will come for him. He just needs to keep doing what he does. Just trying to head it back across him, I think, yeah. but still... The big centre forward in there, was he? Five yards out, six yards out. Asmir, good save to be fair to him. Get but can't do so. Go. The referee decides to add no further time on. Blows. Last year, we struggled to break down defensive teams like this. Whether we were any better at that this year is going to be crucial to our promotion hopes. That question is unanswered by this game against 10 men, but it does give us reasons to be hopeful. Today was an excellent win, where we could have scored five or six. No matter. That's four unbeaten now, and only one goal conceded in those games. On to Wednesday night in Blackburn Rovers. I'll see you next time.